Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Smite Patch Analysis. So this is patch 3.5, uh, Protect and Support, the patch is called. So we're going to start off with the new skins that we've got. We've got Ordo, Solaris, Amaterasu, which looks really good. Uh, K9 Anubis, that also looks really good. Iris have been re really making some good skins of recent. Like, a lot of the time I'll see the new skins and they'll be like, yeah, they don't even look that good and I'll decide not to buy them. But the last few patches have had some really good skins and I've pretty much bought all of them. So, yeah, Hyras are definitely getting a lot of money out of me right now. Uh, so, yeah, Kenan Anubis looks amazing. Um, protect and support uh, Athena is going to have the Peacekeeper Athena and the Enforcer Athena skin now. I'm not sure what I think about these. Um, I'd have to see the actual like player models in game. I'm not sure, but they look like good concepts if they're done well in game. Uh, I don't play Athena too much, although if I get bunged with support when I'm playing Conquest, then Athena is nine times out of ten who I will end up going. So I guess it could come in useful for that. Chiron Mastery skins added. Uh, Fnatic on her had his uh, got updated along with the uh, God card for that. Voice packs added for some of the new skins, uh, avatars, achievements, miscellaneous, don't worry about that. Uh, fixed an issue with Bluestone Pendant not appearing in the MP5 category in the store. Fixed a tooltip issue on Bulwark of Hope. Now, Sovereignty, this is the first really interesting item change. Increased the physical protection aura from 20 to 30. Now, I think I spoke about, uh, in the last patch notes, I spoke about the fact that uh, supports are really in a funny place right now in terms of builds because they nerfed Hyra's nerfed Sovereignty and Heartward and all that going into Season 3 so that they no longer gave as high stats and I think it's good because in a way it forces support those items like Heartward and Sovereignty don't allow a support to be super hyper tank anymore instead the support has to build other items that give more protections but it also, in my opinion, forces supports to choose between whether they're going to build aura items like Sovereignty and Heartwood, which give the team protections, or whether they want to like, build loads of protections themselves and then end up sort of frontlining the team a ton and taking all of the damage themselves. So it's sort of like two different sort of styles of build there. And I think what this has obviously done, increasing the physical protection aura from sovereignty has sort of made that a little bit more viable, just means that once we get those auras balanced so that it is worth it to maybe have the support forgo some of the protections so they can't face tank as much, but they can give a lot to the team. I think once we've got those numbers balanced it'll be really interested to sort of see how um all of that plays out. Then throwing dagger and golden bow, the passive has been changed uh, so that it now does increased damage to minions and jungle camps. Now I really like this, it means that golden bow is sort of going to help clearing a lot more, so it's still going to do the uh, sort of AoE damage uh, upon a successful auto attack uh, against enemy gods. But it's going to do more against uh, minions and jungle camps. So, for example, I tend to build this on Mercury because it helps us clear quite a lot in the jungle. Uh, and also Mercury does really well with crit items anyway. So, yeah, I haven't really got too much to say with this other than the fact that I really like this change. And it's definitely going to be any jungler that's going to build crit. It would definitely be an item that might uh, be worth considering. Um, I know at high level play you should be trying to share jungle camps as much as you can to get effective farm, but especially at lower levels, if you're playing a jungler who does well with crit, then Golden Bow is definitely an item to consider. Or even if you're playing someone on the solo lane who, for example, say you wanted to try Mercury solo, I'm not sure how viable that is, I don't play solo lane that much and I haven't really thought about it, I'm just spitting this out as I'm going. Um, but say you were playing someone like Mercury who does really well with crit items on solo, but you needed some extra clear, like he struggles with, like he would struggle clearing wave maybe, so Golden Bow would help him with that, because it's going to do that extra splash damage on minions. So I really like that change, it's going to open up a load of new options I think. Uh, in the game, fixed Wind Demon from preventing all healing, just a regular bug fix. Change to Amazon Cab, I don't think this is going to do much, his honey has had the slow increased from, 20, uh, from 5, 10, 15, um, to 20% at all ranks, but that's also a nerf at the max rank, which was 25%, so I'm not really sure. I guess max rank, that's a nerf, all the other ranks, it's uh, a buff, but I don't think that's going to have... Overall, I think AMC is still crap, because he's just he doesn't have enough of an escape. Um, 
or any escape. Like, he literally just has that slow. That's, like, his one escape, and that's not really... That's not an escape. It doesn't do much for him. Like, you can get out of that on it, especially because now you have Sprint, which can just be popped in a team fight, and, oh, all of a sudden, everyone's immune to, immune to slows. Doesn't doesn't go well for AMC, so I don't think that's going to be a huge uh, difference maker. Artemis has had a 5% uh, increase at each level on Vengeful Assault, which increases her attack speed. So Artemis is one of those ADCs that does really, really well with uh, auto attacks, as you see if you read that little uh, paragraph that Hyra has left. It's going, like, she's a very in-hand based ADC, which uh, more so than others, so she relies heavily on that sort of attack speed and crit and all that sort of stuff more than other ADCs do. So that's slight buff. I don't know how significant that's going to be. It is only 5%. Uh, as I say, I'm not too sure on obviously how much changing that sort of small amount would affect will translate in game. But Hyros definitely are along the right lines of trying to make Artemis a bit more viable. D Claw now at the first rank of this ability used to deal magical damage rather than physical damage, which is a bit weird because Bastet is obviously a physical goddess and should deal physical damage. But to be honest, this is a sort of a very weird thing that could potentially have never actually been, never actually been found because uh, when you have D Claw like rank one, you're going to be at a very low level. So it's likely that nobody's going to have, no one really has any items that proc or no one's really built that many protections. So it's really hard to really see a difference between dealing magical or physical damage at that level. So I'm surprised that this actually happened because I'm not quite sure how it could have happened in terms of uh, the game code wise. I mean, I've not seen any of the code, any of the code for Smite. Uh, it just seems like a very funny thing to have happened, but I can definitely understand why something like that wouldn't be picked up. Um, Chuck fix, uh, fixed an issue where Torrent's teleportation could be cancelled early, so uh, I'm presuming... I don't know whether that means cancelled by himself uh, to stop him teleporting, if he realised he made a mistake and didn't want to go there, or whether that can't be interrupted. No, cancelled early would mean that he can't stop it. Interrupt. It would be. It would say interrupted if it was about him being stunned out of it. But uh, yeah, so I guess that's a nerf to Chuck then, so that he can't stop teleporting. If he, if you try and juke out Chuck, like he tries to throw his axe one way, uh, and then you sort of run towards it, he teleports, and then you turn around and run the other way, he can then not cancel that mid animation he's going to go over to the wrong side and you're probably going to get away so if you're playing chuck you can't cancel your teleport early so be careful now Chiron, his ultimate now gives him a 40 percent slow while firing that's good Chiron was very 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 strong and is very very strong one of the strongest adcs in my opinion in team fights he can just do so much because if he dies uh as he's in his ultimate form and he kills someone he'll just uh regenerate some health and just end up not dead so he, he's really really strong in team fights so to have that ultimate give him a 40 percent slow is just gonna nerf his ability to sort of come back into team fights uh while trying to get those kills to uh to regenerate his health a bit so he's not gonna be quite as overpowered i still reckon he'll need maybe a little bit more of a nerf in the future but we'll see isis wing gust scaling reduced from 40 percent to 30 percent per hit uh again not a massive change, but one that I definitely feel was needed. Wing Gust hits like a truck. Uh, Isis is also very, very strong. Last patch, I believe they nerfed her three, uh, which is the thing that silences you. That no longer slows as much, which that slow made it super easy to hit the stun ball. If you got hit by that slow, you were basically screwed because you'd get hit by the silence. Uh, so wouldn't be able to use an ability to get away. You'd also be slowed, so Isis can easily hit a stun ball. That ball stuns and does a load of damage. Wing Gust then makes Isis super quick and... She does a ton of damage, so they're reducing the damage that that uh, that Wing Gust does, which I guess will also reduce um, her ability to clear. I don't know. I don't play Isis that much, so I don't know just how overpowered her clear was, if it was overpowered. But that's definitely a change. Having been hit in the face by Wing Gusts in actual fights, I can tell you they hurt a lot, and I'm definitely glad that that's being nerfed slightly. Kepri, base health reduced from 510 to 460, not a huge change. So, one thing you saw with Kepri was that he was just sort of being hyper-aggressive by using his 3 to stun the target and then dashing forwards uh, and pulling the target at very low levels in lane, which was ending up 
resulting in some quite easy kills at times for if you had two people on duo lane that were communicating like the support and the adc were communicating kepri could literally just grab someone and get a really easy uh get the adc a really easy kill early and that obviously uh is quite unbalanced when it was that easy for kepri to do it and survive so it's not like they could easily the other team could easily trade the kill on Kepri because he did have quite a bit of health so reducing that health is going to mean that he's got to be a bit more careful especially in the early game and not quite uh, not dive for those early kills quite as much. Uh, Poseidon fixed an issue where he could pull the fire elementals out of the fire giant pit and then Saket this is the big buff yay Saket's back. Saket got nerfed really really heavily at the start of season 3 uh, not just because they did nerfs to her, but also because crit items be uh, became more expensive and Saket really needs crit, so now they've tried to make her less crit dependent, um, and then obviously when she does get crit, she'll be able to do more because she's just, her actual abilities have been buffed themselves, so even when she when she does get crit, she'll do more, and she'll also do more without crit as well. So Deathbane cooldown reduced from 12 seconds to 10 seconds uh, in terms of cooldown. That's great. Really happy about that. It's uh, just a great source of that. That ability is a huge source of damage. So having that on shorter cooldown is really going to help. So Cat Cobra's Kiss damage increased, scaling increased, Madness damage increased, Madness scaling increased, and updated the tooltip to be less confusing. Fantastic. So yeah, she's definitely overpowered now, that tooltip being less confusing is definitely making her overpowered, that definitely needs to be nerfed, and uh, yeah, I, I, uh, Circuit's just going to be destroying everything because of her new tooltip being less confusing, but yeah, all in all I think Circuit's going to be, like, it's great that Circuit's going to be viable, uh, viable again now, I mean, she wasn't terrible before, but she's certainly nowhere near the level of some other gods like El Kuang and Fenrir but now hopefully she'll actually be played a lot more um, because she was played a ton in season 2 and then just completely dropped off at the start of season 3 so it'll be good to see her back again so Skardi the new god I think was released last patch Calder the wolf has had uh, the cooldown increase on his dash increase from 2 seconds to 5 seconds that's good because I think the wolf, uh, Calder, just has so many different uses. He's so useful, and he's a really nice mechanic to have in the game. But he was a bit too strong at times. Oops, sorry, I just hit my mic if you heard that. Um, increasing the cooldown is uh, quite good, and then they've reduced the duration on her ultimate, I believe Winter's Grasp is her ultimate, uh, from 5 seconds to 4 seconds. So that's not going to do a huge amount. However, again, that's a subtle nerf to Calder, because during the... During Scardi's ultimate, Calder can't take damage, like his health little gem things don't go down. So one thing you could do was set Calder to attack a tower, then just as he's on his last sort of heart thing, you could ult, then he'd be invincible for the duration of your ultimate, and that would allow you to do a lot of um, push to tower. And of course the enemy team can't do anything, because... Hitting him doesn't do anything because he's invincible. The tower can't do anything because hitting him, he's invincible. And then, it's literally, it was crazy push. So obviously reducing that duration is just sort of nerfing that split push potential uh, just a little bit. And of course, if he's tanking tower and there's no one else in the tower, then, and the tower's just hitting away at Calder, you can also be in the tower if there's no enemies nearby. And the amount of damage you could get off on tower and objectives and stuff was absolutely mad so um that was a nerf that needed to happen uh whether it will be enough or not only time will tell but we will see base health increased uh, on sun wukong from 450 to 470 so that's just going to give him a little bit of a stronger start and uh hopefully reduce him being shut down early so from what i read on that little paragraph that Hyra's left uh it seemed that he was struggling early game with uh other gods sort of poking him down in lane and stuff like that so hopefully this will uh, this will mean that he's more viable early game and can hit that late game where he really does well so Vulcan Earthshaker that's his ultimate increase the point blank range damage so if you sort of alt at your own feet that damage has been increased from 50% to 60% and reduce the travel time at max range so that's very good um, 
I'm glad they've done that because the problem with Vulcan's ultimate is it does a ton of damage, but a max range, which is where it does most damage, it's almost impossible to hit because anyone that's paying attention can get out of the way, uh, especially because there's a massive marker on the floor. So um, sort of reducing that time uh, that the enemy has to react to it is going to sort of help that um, hit a lot more often. The only issue with it potentially is Assault, obviously... Assault is not always going to be a Vulcan though, so it's not that bad, because obviously the gods selected are random. And really, Hyrus should be balancing the game about Conquest, in my opinion, not about... Because that's the competitive game mode, not around um, Assault. So I'm not really too worried about that, but on Assault it is probably going to wind a lot of people up. Because it already did, it was already very strong on Assault, and now it's just going to be even more... But uh, let's not worry too much about that. So Zeus, Aegis Assault, no longer knocks back minions. That's really, really nice to have. Um, I didn't play Zeus much, but I heard people talking about they throw down the shield and then it knocks minions back, which is annoying. So I guess that's a good thing for all those people. I guess. Got it. There you go. But anyway, that's it for the patch notes, guys. Uh, let me know... Uh, in the comments what your opinions are on these patch notes, good, bad, what you think they should have done, shouldn't do, etc, etc. Uh, leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe to see more, and I will see you guys next time. Oh yeah, I will leave a link in the description to this webpage if you want to read them yourself. And also, I'll go and check if Hyrus did a live stream. Normally I watch it, but I didn't this time. So I'll go and get a link from the uh, video on Twitch of the Hyrus live stream where they talk about these and show you some of the stuff in game. And uh, you can, I'll put that link in the description as well. But anyway, like the video if you liked it, subscribe to see more, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.